All right, guys, here we are live on Facebook. Uh, sorry for the delay. I had, I had a meeting, and, uh, you know, we just uh, we started a little later than, than planned. But I want to thank everyone for their responses. Uh, we are going to answer some questions here. We're live in Las Vegas. Just got back from the L.A. Fit Expo this weekend. I want to thank everyone for coming out once again for that. Uh, kickoff show of the season, expo show. And uh, this weekend I'm in Placerville, California at the Max Muscle. So I look forward to seeing everyone out there. I know there's a lot of rain up there, and now the rain, of course, has come out to Vegas, which we're not too happy about at this point. But it's better than the snow. So you guys in the East Coast and all over the world where the weather's cold, um, wish you guys well. I'm sitting there complaining about snow, uh, rain, and you guys got snow. So uh, let's start uh, with the questions. I know we had some, uh, we had some on here. Um, and I'm going to answer a couple. Okay, so um, uh, first question, um, uh, Jay, quick question in the bodybuilding is all about the illusion. The smaller joints, the bigger the muscles look, right? I think, you know, that does have something to do with it. We talk about genetics. And in the beginning, I remember people talking about how I had these great genetics. Um, of course, we've seen the advancement in what people's perception of genetics is. Um, yeah, smaller joints do help, but listen, the bigger guys are going to take up more space on stage as long as, you know, you can offset the waist to shoulder ratio and create rounder muscle bellies. That's what basically wins. Of course, conditioning and the symmetry comes into play. But remember, you've got to have proportion, symmetry, muscularity, and definition, all those combinations. So uh, someone might look good in the gym, but they get on stage and they look tend to look blocky or or not as, uh, not as blown out as some of the, the smaller joint guys and, and those smaller joint guys win. Um, really, it's just the illusion. Um, that's what bodybuilding all, is all about. And that's why the condition matters and, of course, the stage lights, okay? Uh, are you and Bradley Martin planning on collaborating? Yes. Uh, at some point, I just spoke to Bradley Martin this weekend at the LA Fit Expo. And I, I will be out, um, as he said, his gym is going to open sometime in March. So I do plan on doing some sort of collaboration hopefully at his new uh his new gym zoo culture so congratulations bradley martin to, uh, once he gets his gym open out there um question if you could go back in time uh what would you like have done differently as far as your training style mistakes you made did your diet concerned um you know what i don't have a lot of uh negative things to say about what i've done um i do wish and i've mentioned this that um i would have competed in the 2002 olympia although I was very busy at the time. I was building my new house in Vegas, but I really kind of wish that I did compete in that show because I would think I would have stood a better chance of actually winning that competition with the momentum I had from 2001 Olympia, 2002 Arnold victory. And we know Ronnie Coleman wasn't his absolute best at that show. So uh, I do kind of wish I did that. But as far as diet and training, um, listen, man, I, I did whatever it took to win. Um, I had great success. I mean, I was top two in the world for almost 12 years which is, I think, pretty unheard of in, in the sport of bodybuilding. I continued much further in my career. I mean, retired at 40. Um, I had always said I was going to retire by 32. So I think I did some things right. Uh, you know, and along the way, I've developed a huge following, a huge fan base. And honestly, I only did what I thought was the best. I didn't really think, okay, well, I, I should do this because people are going to have this perception or not. I really just stayed true to what I believed in and I had the passion to do what I did and you know I had great success at it so if you want to look at my career um, there's there's not a lot of hiccups there I mean I didn't win everything um, I won some I lost some but more importantly as you know I, I just took total advantage of what I had going into each competition okay uh, do you think getting bigger size is based on cal caloric intake or doing much heavier sets less reps Example, five sets, eight reps till failure. I have a, a theory on training, um, and it's going to be more volume training. So if you look back at articles and suggestions from me, training videos, YouTube channels, you'll see that I like to do a lot of volume. So I'll do anywhere between eight to 12 repetitions, but I'll do, you know, five to 10 different movements, three to four sets each. Okay, so the lowest a body part usually um, set wise would be 20 sets. For back and legs, I might do up to 30 sets. So yes, it seems extreme, but I never took the working sets to failure. 
I stayed with more high, higher repetitions. And I think that's important to really engorge the muscle with blood, get the, get the muscle to expand. Because listen, that's what the whole goal is. It's not about how much we're benching or squatting. It's really about the expansion of muscle tissue so we can create that overall size. And I think that's important because I was a bodybuilder and I was judged by how my physique looked. So I always made the, the kind of the joke that I might look like I benched 700, but only bench 400. So it's not relative to ask a bodybuilder, hey, how much do you bench press? Um, ask them how big their arms are. That's a good, that's a good uh, question. But I think really it's important um, just to create that illusion in the expansion of the muscle tissue. So you're going to get that with reps um, and volume training. Okay. Um, I know Dorian Yates had a different style. There's a lot of like really successful bodybuilders that train differently. But if you look at Schwarzenegger, um, Lee Haney, um, Phil Heath, all these guys that had great success in the Olympia stage and winning the Mr. Olympia, they'll all be volume trainers. Okay. Any questions, uh, Victor? Anything you saw? Um, um, this guy wants to know, how do I make my abdomen good? Um, obviously diet's important. You're not going to have abs unless you have low body fat. Okay. Sit-ups, crunches, leg raises. I usually perform three different movements for abs. Crunches, uh, hanging leg raises and rope crunches. Okay. Those are the three exercises. I usually did four sets each. I would train abs every other day, get ready for competition. So only, uh, 12 to 16 weeks out of the year. Um, okay. This is, uh, from Spencer Lewis. Uh, Spencer wrote to me, uh, could you please explain and give tips on getting bigger for a guy whose genes suck, okay, his opinion, and doesn't take any supplements? Should he work harder on his workouts or is it what he eats? Thank you, Jay. It's hard to say um, through a text, um, hey, you know, your genes aren't good. If you tend to hold a little more body fat, the diet has to be a little more in tune. Um, you are what you eat. So, you have to have a set meal plan, and I'm going to stress this, and you guys have heard it a million times, the three most important meals a day. Meal one, the meal before you train, the meal after you train, okay? The meals around that are just feeder meals and filling in the gaps. So you have to have a great breakfast, protein, carbohydrates. If you tend to be, hold more body fat, I would only eat carbohydrates the first meal and the meals around the training, and not a ton of them, okay, just for recovery, glycogen, uh, re repair the muscle tissues. It should be mainly protein. You don't have to eat an extraordinary amount of protein, only a gram per pound of body weight. Um, if you're a hard gainer, obviously the carbohydrates have to be um, more added to every meal. Um, but you have to train. You have to train sufficiently. So I always suggest training, you know, four to six days weekly. Um, the workout shouldn't be extremely long. I just mentioned, you know, enough to, so you rest 45 to 60 seconds in between each set. Um, but you've got to have the workouts and the diet in tune. If you're not eating the meal plans, meaning every th two and a half to three hours, and you're not eating those breakfast before and, and after training meals, then you're doing something wrong. Okay, you can't, you can't go to the gym on no fuel. So the meals have to be in place and then the, the gym has to come in. And make sure it fits in the time of day that it's available for you to... Um, fit it in. Okay. It has to work in your lifestyle. It's a hobby until it becomes a career, right? That's how it started with me. It was a hobby. It became a career. Um, I was paid to do it. It was a lot easier for me. I can sit here and truly tell you guys, you know, when I was contracted and I was paid to be a professional bodybuilder, uh, I understand all you guys out there working jobs and you have other things, you have children, you have school, you have commitments you got to fit it into your lifestyle. I was at that point, you know, I'm not speaking like from out of, out of space. I, at one point was working, I was, you know, going to school. I was trying to fit the meals in. I was trying to fit the gym. I would train eight o'clock at night. The gym would close at 10. Um, I know some of the hours are limited. I moved to Las Vegas to solely prep and train. And that's why I came to a 24 hour city. So I could train at any time of the day. The gyms don't close. Um, I put myself in that atmosphere so I could be a better uh, bodybuilder and do uh, better with my success. Okay. Um, hey, while I'm thinking about it, can you explain the healing process of your bicep when you tore it? So okay. I, I so get that question a lot. So healing uh, the bicep. So 
2011, three weeks out from the Mr. Olympia, I actually, I was doing shoulder presses. I kicked the dumbbells up, which I've done numerous times, you know, thousands of times. Kicked them up. I tore, I detached the upper portion of the bicep where it ties into the shoulder. At the time, I didn't realize it. Um, I competed. I lost the Olympia to Phil Heath, 2011. Um, I did have February, about four months later. Um, they reattached it. Okay. I had to wear a sling, which I only wore for a week, by the way. Um, I was supposed to wear it for about four weeks. And I had to keep my arm in this position. Uh, the recovery process took about a year. It was very hard for me to lift my arm because they reattached it. Um, I had to go to physical therapy. I had to do massage work. Uh, it took a while for the tendon. Obviously, I couldn't do any heavy lifting for about six weeks. And, you know, it was tight. So I had to keep the therapy. I had to, you know, there's nothing that still is restrictive now. I did notice, though, that I did tend to um, guard it a little bit when I train, especially under bench presses. And you'll still see, if you watch closely in the videos, you'll see I kind of, that side a little bit, I'm a little tighter. Of course, everything shortened up a little bit. But the recovery took about a full year before it felt right. And that's why I skipped 2012 and I came back in 13 and competed because it just wasn't right. I had it done in February of 2012. I just didn't feel like I could go in full preparation uh, correctly. So uh, the bicep did um, did get fixed. Um, you know, you can still see a little bit of scar in there, um, but it was able to, it's back to 100% now. Um, so you guys out there, that is a very common in, uh, injury, bicep tears. I know a lot of you guys do it from the bottom portion, but that upper portion, um, you know, it, the recovery is pretty much the same, except you don't have to wear a full cast, okay? Um, all right, so this person will be at Max Muscle Placerville this weekend. I look forward to that. Um, any chance of you making a comeback? Absolutely not. Uh, no comebacks, okay? Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not planning on coming back. Um, have you ever tried MK667 or something similar? I have no idea what that is. Um, I don't really know, okay? So, is it on here? So, are you getting the questions? Yeah, let's see what uh, they wrote on Facebook. You don't, you don't see them coming across? Well, they're pretty generic. Okay. We've answered them. Okay, so, um, okay, so this guy's been, he feels some strange. I've seen not to get a good pump in my bicep. They feel soft. I tried to change the workout heavy and doing more reps, supersets. It only happens at biceps. Can you give me a hint? Biceps can be tricky, man. If you ask me, Jay, what's what's the body part you least like to train the most? It's probably biceps. Um, I would always suggest training a little lighter and doing more repetitions. Really engorge the muscle with blood. Um, it has nothing to do with weights. I mean, I know the guys that have the biggest arms and they train with very light weights. I think it's more just angles. So, you know, I do like to do isolateral movements, dumbbells, um, one-arm curls, uh, remember, cable is going to keep more constant tension other than swinging with a barbell. Um, you just got to keep plugging away at it, man. It's repetition. Some, I mean, 15 reps. Do 15 reps instead of 10 or 12. Um, try different things that, that they work. But isolation of the biceps, that's the main thing. So you can really get that contraction. I mean, listen, if the thing's contracting and you're feeling it, you're going to get some benefit. It's better than not doing the biceps. So, you know, stay with that, you know. Um Amateur body to look for a way to shock my shoulders into new growth, especially in the rear delts. Any shock therapy suggestions? Uh, listen, just keep it basic. Uh, repetitions, um, you know, I prefer a lot of dumbbell work. Um, you have so many ways. Remember, focus on the rear delts. That's the main thing is a lot of people don't focus on the rear delt work. Choose two or three different movements that focus on the rear delts. You know, standing shoulder presses with a barbell that, you know, yes, it's, it's harder on your core, but it's going to involve more of the shoulders. You're not leaning up against something and pushing with your legs and your back. Um, it's going to put more uh, stress on the shoulders. Uh, bent over laterals, you know, lateral machine, cable crossover, reverse. Those are going to work the, the rear delts. Um, but engorge the muscle with blood. That's the main thing, okay? Derek Wilson said, how can he increase his vascularity? And, you know, that's leanness. Vascularity is going to come from leanness, Derek. It's, it's going to be... You know, getting on a diet and getting the skin thin enough to be able to uh, to, to see all the definition. Um, you have to you have to stay with it um, with the eating patterns and everything else. So, 
um, you know, just make sure you're lean enough because that's going to bring up va vascularity. It, obviously, the fat guys aren't going to have as much vascularity, right? Um, okay. Um, is it true that is it true that most elite bodybuilders don't even count calories? Um, I'm talking about the Mr. Olympia ones. I've never counted a calorie in my life. I'll be honest with you. I count protein, carbohydrates, and fats. So I go by kind of the macros. Um, I wouldn't know if you said to me, Jay, how many calories do you eat a day? I always just lied and said between five and 7,000. Um, I don't really know um, what, I re what I would eat. Okay. Um, let's see now. Um, easier way to gain weight. It's so hard to put weight on. Uh, you know what? You have to, um, you have to eat even when you're not hungry. That's the most important thing. I think too many people follow the meal plans that, oh, we're going to, you know, eat, you know, meals one through six, um, but I'm not really hungry. So I'm going to put off, you know, meal four or meal five. You got to eat on the clock. You've got to eat consistently day to day. Remember, you skip a meal the day prior, it's going to affect the next day. It's going to affect the workouts. It's going to affect the transition and the weight. If you're trying to gain weight, you've got to stay active and you've got to stay up with the weight. Okay. Um, you got to keep eating consistently and keep feeding the machine. Okay. As you build more muscle, you need to eat more food. Okay. Next question. Let's see. Do I ever have a cheat meal? Of course I have cheat meals. I actually, uh, I think I'm going to have some in and out Burger today. Yes. And so you guys on the West Coast know about in and out Burger. That's probably my favorite cheat meal. Um, I like cheesecake or carrot cake. Uh, and, you know, I tend to eat pretty much like what I used to eat. And so I'm just going to talk about a little bit. Um, like right now, I probably eat half as much food as I used to eat. So I still eat about five portion meals a day. Um, I eat about six to eight ounces of meat every meal. And then I have like around 50 grams of carbohydrates for the meals that I usually eat unless it's later in the day and I'm not training. But most of the days now I'm training later in the day. Um, you guys ever come to Las Vegas? Um, I train at a few facilities now. You guys have, have that don't follow our Snapchat or Instagram story um, or our YouTube channels. Um, I train at EOS Fitness, um, usually the Lake Mead location. I train at Lift Factory, which is off Cheyenne. It's a new small key card club. It's awesome. We play the music up loud. That's the one with the murals on the wall. Um, and City Athletic Clubs. That's, uh, that's the, the gym that most of the guys go train at the Mr. Olympia. Um, you know, Hidetata Yamagishi's there, Iris Kyle. Um, you know, a lot of people end up working out there. So, um, that gym's a really good gym. They they welcome, you know, the fitness people, um, bodybuilders, whatnot. Um, Jay Jung's the owner. He's a good guy there. So um, make sure you guys check it out when you come to Las Vegas. Um, we have a lot of different events here. The Mr. USA is here. Uh, the Mr. Olympia. Um, you guys haven't got a chance to come out and check out those events. I mean, Vegas is still the hotbed. A lot of people want to uh, be out here and, and get in the mix a few things. But um, you guys out there that, that want to get into fitness, that might have a thought of maybe getting into competition this year or just looking better, you know, just make sure you follow the lifestyle. That's the main thing. And I think, you know, I fell in love with bodybuilding because I love seeing the transformation. I love seeing the progress. And I think a lot of people ask me a lot of times what motivates me to, to continue. And even at my age, I still work out, you know, four or five days a week and I'm still following the meal patterns. Of course, it's a lot easier nowadays because of who I am and, and the availability of everything. It kind of my business revolves around, you know, the fitness and the diet and the training. But, you know, I had this passion to to be something great. Um, and for me, it was just, you know, finding the right path to follow. And I kind of carved my own way. Um, I was a morning trainer. I was a middle of the day trainer. I was an evening trainer. Nowadays, because of my work schedule, um, kind of managing all my different things, I tend to train later in the day. I don't train as much in the morning. I did a walk this morning for about 30 minutes around my neighborhood. Sometimes I get on the cardio equipment at home. Um, I do a lot of different things now um, based on my schedule rather than 
hey, this is the time that my body works best to train. Um, and a lot of days I miss, I'll be honest with you, I'm just like the average person where I get too busy and I just want to do what kind of works on my schedule and makes me happy. And I still use my workouts as an outlet. I still use my workouts as um, a stress reliever. And I love to work out. And, you know, it started from day one. I started training at the age of 18, like, join the gym. And I don't think I'll ever stop until, you know, the day I can't work out anymore. And I hope that's never, but you just never know. Um, and I influence all those to get into working out. It doesn't matter what level, not necessarily bodybuilding, whatever. But um, uh, this guy wants to know, build, building a bigger chest, he seems to struggle with the chest. Remember, you got to create that art. So... If you're bench pressing, okay, whether it be barbell, dumbbell, hammer strength, you got to create an arch, okay? So instead of pushing, you know, and rounding the shoulders, rounding the back, the arch, the arch has to stay in the back. The chest has to stay at the highest plane of the body. And you need to push out and you need to contract, okay? That's the biggest suggestion I can have with chest. Of course, the volume and the angles, inclines, declines, flat bench, flies, you know, cable crossovers, that kind of stuff. You want to hit it from variety angles, but more importantly, create that arch, pop the chest out, really contract, use weights that you can control. I see too many people in the gym, you know, bench pressing too much, um, international chest day, you know, that's not necessarily the day you have to train chest. Everyone seems to want to do it on Mondays, but, uh, you know, just do the volume and do what works and what feel the muscle work. Don't just do it just to push weights. Okay. Um, are you coming to body power? Yes, I'll be at body power in the UK. Um, is, uh, what's a good mass gainer? Um, I have one in my line, hundred uh, percent pure muscle mass. Um, we have some supplements here. You guys know I'm in the supplement business. Uh, and you know, I do take, um, on and off pre-workouts. I take aminos. I use protein on a daily basis. Um, for the shows I use fat burners, not so much anymore because I'm not taking, uh, I'm not competing. Um, a multivitamin, I always suggest that. I have a multi-pack that I use. Um, uh, uh, are you going to try other things like martial arts or yoga? I don't think so. Um, I used to do Pilates and kettlebell training. But I wouldn't be against yoga, I guess, because it would probably be good for stretching. But um, I'd probably get my ass kicked in martial <laughs> arts. You guys saw me beat up Bob the doll the other night at the gym. I, I wasn't... Uh, Stiff I was pretty winded from that. Um, what's the best cardio? Listen, man. Cardio is this. Cardio is to increase metabolism, not, you know, you can't sit there and look at the machine and say, I burned X amount of calories because the machine's not accurate anyway. Everyone's body is different. So I like to do stair mill, bike, elliptical, treadmill, walk outside, um, some interval training. I mean, you saw me at Lift Factory pushing the sled. I mean, that killed me. Um, so spurts, I just suggest, you know, 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, um, pick and choose what, switch it around, you know, find what exercise works best for you. I mean, I walk outside. That's great cardio. Just moving my body is going to be, um, something to create, increase metabolism. So, um, you know, find what be works best. I know a lot of you guys can't walk outside now. So treadmill, bike, whatever's going to exert calories, you know, that's, that's the main thing. Okay. The swole monkey side print. Hat. This is my favorite one. You guys haven't seen this. You know, Swole Monkey's me. If you guys, if you guys haven't seen the Swole Monkey, you can see the hair. The hair. I'm actually the Swole Monkey. So, um, you know, I want to thank you guys um, for tuning in and watching this thing today. And you know, we're gonna try to schedule more of these Facebook lives. And uh, I want you guys to answer questions. You know, I'm on Instagram and. I don't get on Facebook as much because you can imagine with six and a half million people, it's hard to answer the questions on there. Um, so make sure you guys, you know, follow our social media, especially our YouTube channel, um, Jay Cutler TV. Make sure you guys um, click the subscribe button. Um, you'll see, um, you know, putting out free content on there, uh, training, just insights on what's going on. And, um, you know, I'm staying active. I'll see you guys at the trade events and make sure you guys uh, come over and say hello. And stay tuned. Okay, we'll be on more. Good luck, everyone. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.